WOCA. Ocala. Six minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. The other day, there was a a story about the actress Julia Louis-Dreyfus making uh, an announcement. I guess she did it on Twitter. Everybody announces things on Twitter now. And uh, we all know and love Julia Louis-Dreyfus. And apparently she's now um, battling breast cancer. Um, So we are going to talk about that. Um, There are some things to... That, that were in the article about her um, indicating that she had early detection and that's a good thing in her case um, and it sounds like it's a good thing in all cases so we're talking about the importance of breast cancer screenings uh, I don't think Lauren is here right Robin Lauren didn't show up today right, L- Lauren exactly. Devick yes. Lauren Devick is the manager of marketing communications at Ocala Health and she has invited three gre- guests in here uh, Dr. Angela Wah good morning doctor good morning nice to see you very good you're looking good in pink wait m- wait, wait let me put your picture on the thing here <laughs> this would be the month this would be pink. the month to wear pink. The month to wear pink. Yeah, I need to get my pink sweater out. I got Absolutely. A, I got a pink sweater. It's not a bad looking sweater. I should have worn it today. Yeah, I, I know. Kids always make fun of me, though. Look at you, big guy in a pink sweater. Yeah. Hey, that's care. what we wear it that's for. That's exactly right. Awareness. Um, and you are Kelly McNeil. Yes, sir. I think we've met before, correct? Yes, sir. We've, uh, we've been here a couple of years in a row now, I think, to thank, talk about this. Thank you for coming back. And Justin Lamb, good to see you again. Good morning. Thank you. How are you? Very well. <clears throat> so... Are you all from the advanced imaging centers? Is yes. it all from the same yes, place? Sir. Yes. And are you where people find out for the first time that they have breast cancer? Is that the place where you first find out, oh, I guess I, guess I got something? Well, it's one of the places in Ocala, and we would like it to be the place where everybody finds out. So how do you handle that? What's the, what's the, what's the scene like? like some, a lady comes in there, you do the, the screening. Does she find out right there, or does she no. have to wait for the doctor? No, screenings are different than a woman that comes in with a problem or a lump. Oh, okay, okay. okay. So this is your routine yearly screening. They come in, they get it done. You know, the image is, there's four pictures, it takes a few seconds each, and they're in and out. And usually later that same day, I will read the mammograms in a batch, because they've shown that's more accurate, Mm -hmm. um, less disruption. And then a couple days later in the mail, she'll get a letter um, your mammogram was negative, all is fine, continue with your screening. Or let's say I saw something on the mammogram that needs more pictures or needs an ultrasound, then th- that they'll get a letter stating that they need to come back for more imaging. And do you have ladies who show up every year, regul- like it's a regular appointment? Absolutely. Every Tons. year? Tons. Yes. And that's what you recommend, right? That's what you would say yes. to do? Yeah. That is yes. our current recommendation. Uh, it It is at times in flux on the news. Some governmental committees will start recommending every two years after 50, um, but the current recommendation is yearly. So what do you think? Do you agree with the government every two years? No. No, I think the government's position, they're they're looking at cost effectiveness um, and for the amount of lives you save, Mm -hmm. if you screen every two years versus every one, you know, what is the cost difference? And I look at it as the amount of lives you save, yeah. and you save more by yearly screening. My mother died, uh, but not from breast cancer, but she had breast cancer like 25 years maybe before she passed away, mm-hmm. and she defeated it, which is very, very good. But Excellent. she but she went through the you know, the hell and all that part, the, the losing the hair, the, all yeah. the chemotherapy stuff. And what I remember, and I'm just asking you this way, so to kind of compare it, because it's 25, maybe 30 years ago that I'm talking about, so I'm wondering how much it changed. She went to the hospital. They didn't know. She was going to be put under, and she said to my dad, she said, uh, I, I want you to be the one to tell me, because she knew that if she woke up and she had no breast, that would be that sure. they took it off. So is that still the way they do it? No. That you don't know? It's so no. you, Oh, wow. So let's say a woman has a lump or the screening mammogram shows a problem. They're going to come into us for a diagnostic mammogram, which is different. Special pictures, they may get an ultrasound. Those patients leave with their results. We let them know before they leave Mm -hmm. if it's negative. Or if there's something of concern, we let them know that they need to have a biopsy and what the next step is. Mm -hmm. And I even have a clinical navigator 
And this is her job, to see these patients with problems through the entire process. Have we met her? I think we've met her. Right? Probably. You've probably met Laura. She's phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. But yeah, she so it's has a bit, a bit of stage fright, so... <laughs> not not a talker on the radio. Right. Oh, was she scheduled to be here today? No. We no. try every year to get her, but... <laughs> she, she, she's busy doing her job. Okay. She is. She is All very right. busy. But uh, so the idea is women know now um, mm-hmm. what the results of their tests are. And then they go and have a, a lumpectomy. You know, they'll mm-hmm. have the area taken out, not a whole breast, and they will sample a lymph node, and that information usually gives the surgeon and the oncologist enough to know what the next step is. Mastectomies are rare now. Most patients Thank are curable with yeah. a lumpectomy and radiation. Yeah. And yeah. the men experience this too, right? Yes. They can I have mean, breast cancer? Yes, absolutely. Men don't obviously have screening mammograms, but we do have men come in with lumps. And the unfortunate thing about male breast cancer is um, because there's less breast tissue, if there's a tumor there, it doesn't have to travel as far to spread. Oh, so okay, the, the okay. mortality rate from male breast cancer is much worse than really? women. But fortunately, the occurrence of male breast cancer is about one one hundredth of what it is in women. What what is do is there any uh, lifestyle that causes it or that we can help prevent it? Is no one I mean, you hear a hundred different things on the on right. infomercials. No, um, I don't think anything has been proven. There is an association with the BRCA gene. Um, the, the BRCA1 and the BRCA2. Yeah, They've been shown there's a relationship between breast, that was the, ovarian, circumcision. Who's the actress that did something with that? The, what's her name? The, the, the big Julie. lips? Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. And some, I mean, some women, if they have the gene, are actually having prophylactic bilateral mastectomies. That's pretty drastic. Um, just because like you it, have yeah. the gene doesn't mean you're going to get breast cancer, but what it means is you have a much more increased risk, so you have to uh, follow your screening closely. And Justin, as a community relations manager, how do you manage to get your word out to the public, to the women, to um, alleviate their fear of coming in? Um, well, I really don't work in the, we don't really work in the realm of alleviating their fear, in a uh-huh. sense, but what we do is we have a campaign, especially for this month of October, that is our um, Pink Flamingo com- campaign that we, um, we partner with a lot of businesses here in Ocala to um, put out our pink flamingos like the one you have over here behind us. And that's to drive awareness of breast cancer uh, and the yearly, you know, to make, you know, for women to get their yearly mammograms, um, to do their self-checks if they, you know, if they, this, if they feel something, if they're concerned about something to, you know, have a conversation with someone and preferably their provider and, and make an appointment. But um, so the way that we try and, and stay on top of it is obviously through our, that campaign and bringing awareness in the community um, and shining the spotlight on October being Breast Cancer Awareness Month um, and partnering with the businesses who a lot of times we find out that they're, um, you know, they might have someone within their own employment that is um, going through something. So it's a great opportunity. To make them talk to each other. Because yes. sometimes people like to keep it all private, and maybe that's not such a good thing. Right. Do, it does does uh, insurance or lack of insurance uh, keep a, a lady away? Is, is that a fear, the, the financial part of it that might, you know, that would be I'm a shame, sure wouldn't it? I'm sure it does. Yeah. It shouldn't. Um, because here in Ocala, we have the Michelle Graham program, which I'll let Justin speak a- about a bit more. But essentially, a woman who has no insurance or is underinsured mm-hmm. um, gets assistance and so that they can get their mammogram. And even if their mammogram is positive, it helps cover further testing and possibly even treatment. Usually yes. biopsy, yeah. too, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's a program started by Michelle Obama? No. No? no? Where, um, where's Michelle okay. Graham? It's actually, um, the program was... Gosh, I'm trying to sound smart, Robin. It's not working. <laughs> well, she made it seem like she started the program. Oh, she did? She was <laughs> now, Michelle Graham is a local foundation that helps local m- women and men here. Who's the Michelle? Michelle Standridge wa- is okay. the Michelle behind Michelle Graham, and the old Graham is for mammogram. Oh, that's and, what I got. Yeah. Yes. So Michelle um, discovered before the age of 30 that she had breast cancer, and she had a three-year battle, uh, ultimately um, uh, succumbed to breast cancer. Oh, my god! But during that three-year campaign. And when was that? This was back um, 2000. Five, 2005 six, somewhere something like that so um At least there, 10 years ago yeah so during the, her her three-year battle she was very much an educator of letting women know 
they got to take their health into their own hands. They have to check themselves. They don't want to wait till 40 if they feel something and there's concern. So on her, her on her passing, her family and friends created the Michellegram through their mm. church as part of the mission of the church. And they are completely 100% nonprofit. They don't every dollar that comes in goes right back out to the community to help women and men. They've actually helped uh, I know of two, maybe it might be more than that, two men with screening mammograms or their diagnostic mammograms. And they're a phenomenal organization because they, they, they are able to meet with folks immediately and help them get into our facilities and, uh, and get covered. The only thing that they ask of the individuals that they have a $25 copay, but they have been able to expand their services over these past um, seven years, eight years, from starting off as a screening mammogram service to, like they just said, wow. from diagnostics to ultrasounds to breast MRIs. And they have actually now started to work with some local surgeons and help in working with them. And I was actually, on uh, next Tuesday night, um, their University of Florida is jo- um, going to be j- joining forces with Michelle Graham because there's so many national organizations out there that do a lot with for breast cancer but they aren't able to help folks right here and that's what's amazing about michelle graham you know our our role in everything is just to get the word out and, and i'm wondering how hard it is to get the word out about that uh, about, about not just the michelle graham but about any campaign anything that somebody who's tucked away i don't know i'm trying to picture somebody who's never pays attention to the news or whatever I mean, this is stuff we need to get to every person who's living here, right? Well, it's part of the reason why we're talking today. That's it, yes. But my question for Justin and Kelly is, if there's a woman listening who wants to have her mammogram with us at Advanced Imaging, doesn't have insurance, wants to contact or wants to do it through Michelle Graham, who do they contact? Do they contact us? Do they contact Michelle Graham? Yes, they could. Well, they could always reach out to us, and we can connect them. Uh, the, The... Probably a, a quicker route would be going directly to michellegram.com, or they can call them at area code 352-469-6006, and, um, and they, uh, they should be able to uh, speak with Sherry or Terry Roberts, and they will get them um, through the interview process. We are up against a break, but we will be back. Uh, Dr. Angela Watt is in the studio. She's a physician with Advanced Imaging Centers. Uh, Kelly McNeil is here. She's the Imaging Supervisor for Advanced Imaging Centers. And Justin Lamb is the Community Relations Manager for Advanced Imaging Centers. And we'll be right back. If you have any questions, by the way, we will take, we'll take phone calls on the other side of the break. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. Mainly cloudy for the rest of the day, a shower or thunderstorm around, an afternoon high 79 to 81, a shower or thunderstorm left over in a few spots in the evening, otherwise cloudy through the night tonight with a low 74 to 77. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm Kevin Snyder. It's the end of the fiscal year, and that means budget cuts and number crunching. Now's the time of the year you're evaluating your expenses, planning your budget, and finding ways to save money and increase efficiency to maximize profits. Dex Imaging understands and delivers. Call Dex Imaging today for a free document management evaluation. Cutting your office expenses is as easy as calling Dex Imaging. 352-266-0333. Start saving money today and increase your bottom line with Dex Imaging. Printers, copiers, and fax machines that increase office productivity and save you money. No one understands your bottom line better. Call Dex Imaging today, 352-266-0333, or check them out on the web at DexImaging.com. That's D-E-X-Imaging.com, or call 352-266-0333 for your free document management evaluation today. Hey, this is Matt Wilkerson from Verizon. You work all day, right? So why would you want to spend your night out shopping for that new phone? Well, Marion County, let me and Verizon help you out. I can deliver to your home or office, saving you precious time. Phone, tablets, internet, home phones, even accessories. Whatever you need, we will deliver free of charge. Call me at the store, 352-528-0020. That's 528-0020. 
All right, 21 minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, part of the, the, the wonderful thing about having a community is that the community can come together whenever there's a, a mission at hand. And uh, conquering cancer it almost seems insurmountable, but when you have people who are dedicating their lives to it and they have an idea on how we as average citizens can help we're all ears so uh, uh once again dr angela watt um kelly mcneil and justin lamb are here we're talking about advanced imaging centers uh, uh campaign the pink flamingo campaign so this is easy i can get a pink flamingo and put it in my yard and show everybody that absolutely. i support what you are doing right absolutely and not only that but it'll remind somebody hey go get a mammogram right right so the the pink flamingos are available at our either of our facilities um on um, southeast 17th street or out on state road state road 200 and they're 12 dollars each and that 12 dollars then goes to uh, michelle graham to um, continue to help local individuals be able to get the screening that the, and diagnostic mammograms that they need nice and some local business have whole flocks of them <coughs> yes i've front. seen them That's on cool. the lawns yes i know well we had uh five of them at one time didn't we i, th yeah. I think so yeah, yeah so you said there was a special i know it's kind of weird that a medical operation has a special but this is an important one yeah for the month of october we have a screening mammogram special for those that um that need to come in and get a screening memory on, and it's one hundred thirty-three dollars and ninety-eight cents. Okay, and uh, what do they do? Just call you, or how do they do that? They set set it up by phone call, I guess. Yes, they can call us at uh, area code three five two eight six seven nine six zero six and uh, press the option for scheduling and then if they um, and I'll let dr. Watt kind of speak to the the uh, screening memory and yes. if what yes. is required and what's not required for that um, if they have an order from their doctor that's great obviously we like everyone to be plugged in to a family doctor or a primary doctor or practitioner I never heard it put if, that word before if however plugged in yeah <laughs> <laughs> if, however, you haven't been to your uh -huh. primary practitioner in a while, uh -huh. and you don't have an order that should not be a barrier, you can just call and schedule yourself. What's the blue streak in your hair for? What is that? Um, well, it, interesting. I started a year ago. It was pink <coughs> for breast cancer. That was pink? Well, and I had one blue? in my hair that was pink <laughs> for breast cancer awareness start uh, last uh -huh. October. And then after that passed, I just like changing the colors. But next week, I'm getting it changed to pink again. Oh, that's your thing. Nice. It's, a, it's a sexy look, though. You got a nice hair. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm turning red. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you know what? We remember in the old days. Um, well, you're all too young, but Florida was filled with people with pink flamingos. It was just a fad. It's remember? A retro thing. Yes. yes. So yeah. So now go and do it again. If everybody twelve dollars, you get a pink flamingo. Put it in your yard. You know. And it means something now. And it helps it, people so much. It helps yes. people. Yeah. Yeah. And we adopted the flamingo um, seven, going on seven eight years ago as right. our. Um, um, icon for breast cancer awareness being in Florida and so that's where the uh, breast the F pink flamingo campaign was born out of right, right. so we were very fortunate we've partnered with uh, um, a lot of businesses here in Ocala that allow us to go out and put the flamingos in a large uh, numbers in front of their businesses to drive that awareness and in, in return those businesses make a, um, a donation to Michelle Graham and that continues to, um, you know, able to build their coffers so that they can continue to refer patients to um, to, our, to us at Advanced Imaging or a few other imaging centers. You don't know the, the women, the number of women that come in and they have a problem and you just see their wheels spinning. That, oh, my God, I'm going to need more tests. I'm going to need surgery. Mm. And they don't have insurance. Oh, my gosh. And then Laura comes in and talks to them about Michelle Graham. Mm -hmm. And in the midst of and all this stress, suddenly, there's a little bit of relief. Yeah. yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Well, it's crazy that, you know, money is such an important thing in life, but it's not as important as health. And there's the, the wonderful thing about our society is we have so many programs, whether it's government or not government, we have some really good programs. So don't ever, let, don't ever put your health on the back seat. Do you know the, the state mockingbird in Florida? I mean, the state bird of Florida is the mockingbird. You, you know did that? not know that? How come it's not the flamingo? Do you know what we should start a rumor that says if you put the pink flamingo in your yard, it'll attract real flamingos? <laughs> I have never seen a real flamingo except in Bush Gardens. Have you ever seen any? No. Yes. Silver Springs. Disney World. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever heard exactly. why they're pink? 
Yes. So Why? Do it. They, it's from the, the, the coral fish. Or the, the shrimp. The they eat shrimp. That's what I heard. Shrimp. Yep. That's, how come we don't turn pink when we eat shrimp? Uh, <laughs> are we, are we pink? But, At least for the month of October. I guess oh, we're yeah. a little bit pink, yeah. <laughs> well, what's wonderful about this is that you have so many different choices on how to get a mammography. And you have people in there that will speak to the person before you're getting it. And you treat everybody with respect and ultra care. We have... I love my staff. They're fantastic. They're, they're I bet they good love at what you they too. Do, and they are dedicated. Do they tease you a lot? A little bit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they're so dedicated, and they're, they're all about making the patients comfortable. We know this. Just a regular screening mammogram is stressful. Women are just mm-hmm. afraid. Oh my God! What if I have breast cancer? And you know what? And and I know this speaking because my mom had uh, breast cancer. It's She's the one with the worst fear, but s- the rest of the family is part of it. It's sure. it's, it's it's nobody gets this disease by themselves. I yeah. hope I hope yeah. nobody's alone out there. Although I will pass on one bit of information or misinformation. I get uh, frequently I speak to women and they say, "Well, I don't have a family history," meaning no, oh, I don't have a screening, or I'm not sure what they mean by that. But eighty-five percent of women with breast cancer do not have a family history. Oh really? Oh my! So you're not in the clear. So oh, gosh. get your yearly mammogram. If I could say one thing from this show, if it's been more than 12 months since you've had your mammogram, schedule it today. Please. Robin, when's the last time you were? Yeah, it's been more than 12 months. On the spot. She's going to be there. Yeah, we'll it's see been you about soon. three years. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will get my referral. <laughs> um, th- you don't need it. <laughs> That's the great part. Yep. You don't That's need a referral. Part. I can just oh, I'm glad you in. said that, Robin. So that we, it yeah. should not be a barrier. You do yeah. not need a referral. Nice. So just go set it up. And who do we speak to again? You just call call us at area code three five two eight six seven nine six zero six and then select the option for scheduling department. And then if uh, folks need additional resources um, or would like to view our services online, they can visit us at Ocala Health AIC dot com and there we have a vast number of resources and information um, that individuals can access. Very good. Uh, can uh, uh, teenage girls come in? To get screening? No. I, I would not recommend it. Uh-huh. Um, teenage girls, their tissue is different. It's denser, um, harder to read a mammogram. And also, you know, studies of many, many thousands of women have shown y- the yield of a breast cancer in someone that young is so low, it doesn't really justify screening all these young women. Oh, okay. So, okay. That's a um, good question, though. With that. The idea is because you got a lot of 40. young people mm-hmm. walking past the window. Sure. Unless, the mo- I mean, if the teenager has a lump, they should come see us, and oh. I do see. So that. if the reason, but, okay, yeah. But for screening, no. The idea is screening should begin at forty. Um, if you have a mother or a sister that had breast cancer before menopause, mm-hmm. you should talk to your doctor about starting your screening before forty. Oh, okay. Excellent. Uh, we I have recorded this conversation. We will edit out all of my stupid comments, and it'll be pure. <laughs> it'll be pure information. Uh, Justin Lamb, thank you for coming in. Thank you. Are you related in any way to Reuben Lamb? That is my dad. That's your dad. Oh wow! Have you ever seen the painting I did of your dad? Yes, sir. Mr. Did you know that it was me who did it? No, I did not. He has that hanging in his house. Yeah, your dad was in my living room for three months. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly McNeil, good to see you again. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank, Thank you, you for the work you've chosen to do. Dr. Angela Wyatt, you are outstanding. Thank you for being Pleasure. here. I hope yes. to see lots of women come in. Absolutely. Love that blue streak. It's going to be pink next time, right? Next week. How do you do that? Is it Kool-Aid? No, I haven't done it at the salon. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought it was Kool-Aid. <laughs> no, I can't do it with Kool-Aid. I can't do it with Kool-Aid. <laughs> we'll be right back. Fox News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. More than 170 people in Las Vegas hospitals struggling to recover from Sunday night's massacre, including Aaron Cotter's father, Doug, who wasn't located by his family till the next